All right, you guys, welcome. We are going to start on absolute value equations. So if you want to open up your packet to um, right here, 3.5 absolute value equations and inequalities, we will get started. So um, this is basically we are solving an absolute value equation. Absolute value looks like this with these two bars. And what inside, what is inside is basically referencing the, um, what we call absolute value, which means basically the distance from zero on a number line. So just like anything, it is always going to be positive. It can never be negative. So if the value inside of the absolute value brackets is a negative number, it's still the same distance from zero. So let me just show you. Here is zero. If I said we've got negative two or positive two, these are still two units from zero, whether you're in the positive or in the negative. So that is why absolute value is always positive. So um, when you're talking about distance, even if you're walking backwards, you're still going a positive number of steps. So there is kind of a little brief. So when you're looking at absolute value, the value inside of here can be either negative or positive and give you the same answer. So you have to basically provide for both answers. So when you have the absolute value of x equals a, x can either be negative a or positive a. All right, and here is how we are going to um, solve that. Although just keep in mind that if you have the absolute value of a um, situation here, the answer always has to be positive, all right? C always has to be greater than or equal to zero. If it's negative, then that is going to be no solution. So here are your steps to solve an absolute value expression or equation. You, number one, isolate the absolute value expression, which means everything within the absolute value bars. So that gets to be on one side of the equation. Everything else is on the other side of the equation. So you're just taking what's inside here and everything else is on the other side of the equation. So let's do that here. So in this example one, I've got my absolute value bars here. There is a negative five right here on this side of the equal sign. So before I do anything, for step one, I need to isolate the absolute value expression of 7x plus 9 on one side of the equal sign, everything else on the other side of the equal sign. Well, the way I'm going to do that is add 5 to both sides. So when I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get the absolute value 7x plus 9 equals 21. So you see here, my expression is isolated. All right. So step one is basically, isolated. this is the most important step. And surprisingly, this is the step that the kids get, that the students seem to forget or not do or find to be not important. So don't be one of them because you don't get it wrong. Be the student who sees this and does the step. Step two, you're going to rewrite this as two equation. So one is going to equal 7x plus 9 in the positive 21, the positive distance from 0. And the other is going to be 7x plus 9. I'm not changing what's inside the absolute value. These are exactly the same, but that's going to equal negative. 21. Okay. So I've got two equations. Make sure you've got two equations, one and two. 
and one is equal a positive distance, the other is equal a negative distance, okay? Again, very important. Don't forget any of these steps because you'll just make your own life that much harder, all right? Now I'm just gonna solve for x. So step three, be solve each equation for x, okay? So I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides. I'm gonna get seven x equals 21 minus nine is gonna be 12. Is that right? I think so. And then you've got x equals 12 divided by seven. Divide seven from both sides, all right? This one, you're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides and get seven X equals negative 30. Divide both sides by seven and I'm gonna get negative 30 over seven. So my two answers are going to be X can either equal 12 over seven or negative 30 over seven. Now to double check your answers, you're just gonna throw those back into your equation. So if I take um, seven, the absolute value is seven times 12 over seven plus nine minus five, does that equal 16? Well, let's see, I'd get 12 plus nine, which is 21 minus five equals 16. Yep, 16 equals 16, check. What about the other one? Do this. So I'd say the absolute value of seven times negative 30 over seven plus nine minus five equals 16. I'm running out of room, but you can see I get negative 30 plus nine minus five equals 16. Negative 30 minus nine is gonna give me negative 21. But since it's in the absolute value, it becomes positive 21. When I take those absolute value bars off, minus five, and so therefore I get 16. So both, both answers check off. Just make sure you verify because sometimes you're gonna get extraneous answers that don't work and those are they need to be booted out so my next one here again i'm need to step one isolate the absolute value bars and how am i going to do that well five is being multiplied by what's going on in the absolute value or the absolute value bars are actually being multiplied by five so i'm going to use my inverse operations I'm gonna divide by five. So I'm gonna divide this whole thing by five. And so that way this cancels to be one. And I'm left with the absolute value of eight X plus 11 equals negative two. All right, so please notice you are not done with step one until all you do is have the absolute value bars over here. That is what you want. Do not mess with what's inside the absolute value bars until everything is by itself. Only when you get it like this, where I've got absolute value on one side and everything else on the other, only at this point are you going to rewrite it as two equations to do step two. So step two, I need my two equations. One equation will look, I'm just basically rewriting what's inside these absolute value bars exactly the same equals negative 2 and over here 8x plus 11 equals positive 2. So I'm going to plug this in, subtract both sides by 11, and I'm hoping that you guys are seeing something that I'm not addressing at this time, but if you're not, then we'll Let's talk about it in a minute. So I would get this, subtract both sides by 11, and I would get negative nine, x equals negative. Okay, so here are my two answers. Now when I go to verify, I'm gonna go to verify this. 
and I'm going to say, all right, 5 times 8 times negative 13 over 8 plus 11 equals negative 10. So here's my first. I'm basically just plugged in negative 13 over 8 into the x. Um, and I've got this equation up in here. All right. So at this point, I'm just going to say 5 times. This is going to be negative 13 plus, because these cancel out, plus 11 is giving me negative 2 equals negative 10. Negative 2, when I take the absolute value, bars away, is going to be 5 times 2 equals negative 10. Well, that's wrong, because this is 10. does not equal negative 10, so this answer does not work. Let's see about the other one. So I've got 5, 8 times, and I'm using 9 over 8 plus 11. I'm hoping you guys are seeing it by now, but if not, that's okay. We'll figure it out. So then we're seeing this, and we're going to say, all right, 8 divided by 8. So I'm going to get negative 9 plus 11, which is 2. So now we've got a positive 2, but still. 5 times the absolute value of 2 would be 5 times positive 2, which is positive 10. And here's where you find, wait a minute, you absolutely cannot have an absolute value equal a negative number. So really, if you would have seen it before, you could have at this point said there is no solution because of the fact that there is no way an absolute value can equal a negative number, all right? So at this point, this is no solution. But I wanted to go over with you verifying it when it's not going to turn out correctly so you see the importance of verifying. All right, moving on. Now I've got an absolute value here and an absolute value here. So what do I do? How do I solve this? All right, let's talk. So on these, you're going to basically do the same thing. I see that I have both sides are both isolated. There's no extraneous um, numbers. We do not need to do inverse operations. So I'm going to rewrite this first one as x plus 2, and I'm going to equal that to the positive of 3x minus 1. Then I'm going to write my second equation as x plus 2, same. And this is going to be negative 3x minus 1. So I'm doing the exact same thing as I did before. It's just that then they both come out of the absolute value um, bars. So now I'm going to, um, let's just subtract 3x from both sides. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. If not, you're welcome to do it your own way. We should come up with the same answer. If we don't, then we're in trouble. Negative 2x equals negative 3 when I subtract 2 from both sides. x equals 3 over 2. And what happens in this one? x plus 2 equals negative 3x plus 1 because I distribute that negative. Then I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So 4x plus 2 equals 1. And then I subtract two from both sides and I'd get negative one x equals negative one fourth. All right, so here are my two answers. Now I'm going to verify and make sure that both are valid answers. So to do that, you're going to say, all right, three over two plus two equals three times three over two minus one. So here I would get that's going to be 4 over 2, which is going to be 7 over 2. And this is going to be 9 over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is 7 over 2. So check. That works. Then we've got to include this. So we've got negative 1 fourth plus 2 equals 3 times negative 1 fourth minus 1. So this is going to be, I'm just going to change this to um, 8 over 4, 
which then would give me 7 over 4 equals, and this would give me negative 3 over 4 minus, and I'm going to change this to 4 over 4, and I would have positive 7 over 4 equals negative 7 over 4, so that one does not work. So this solution does not work, the solution does. So in this case, I only have one solution, okay? This is no longer, this is not a solution, all right? Moving on, last example for this, we've got the same type of thing. So I'm going to say, all right, x plus 5 equals x plus 11, or, and x plus 5 equals negative x plus 11. Alrighty, I can see this is going to be no solution, but let's figure it out anyway. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides and get 0, right? So I'm left with 5 equals 11. 5 does not equal 11, so that doesn't work. Then if I do this, I'm going to get negative x plus 11. Oops, sorry, minus 11. That's negative x minus 11. This one will probably work. So when I add x to both sides, I'm going to get 2x plus 5 equals negative 11. Subtract 5 from both sides and get negative 16. Divide by 2, get negative 8. So let's see. If I plug in, I'm going to verify this. This one I know doesn't work. Let's see if I can work this. So I'd get negative 8 plus 5 all in the absolute value equals negative 8 plus 11. Negative 8 plus 5 is going to give me negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3. Negative 8 plus 11 is going to give me positive 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of positive 3 is 3. So boom, that works. So this is not a solution, but this one is. There is my solution for that. The solve. All right, guys, so that's the end of this one. Make sure you watch the absolute value regarding inequalities. Okay, there you go.